since the unrest began. The film crews are simply not allowed in. Gay Patterson Lamb's position as an ambassador's wife, armed with a video camera, gave her an unparalleled opportunity. Being a mother as well, she took her two-year-old daughter, Alexandra, along for a ride through a city in turmoil. This was last month. Optimism fills the air at mass demonstrations against the years of Socialist Party rule. It had left Burma poverty-stricken and repressed. The pent-up feelings burst out. The 25th of August, 1988, Rangoon. Okay, okay. Everybody's out on strike. Everybody. Everybody wants you, want to. Don't with the one-body system, you know. The protesters form a ring around the ambassador's wife so that she can continue filming unhindered. Oh, yeah. to protect me while I'm videoing. Oh, yeah. They want this recorded for history. So all the traffic has been moved around the 
They know how vital it is for their cause to get the message out at last from their heavily censored country. The Burmese flag is flown upside down, an international distress signal from a country in crisis. But at this stage, there are many smiling faces. Once more, Alexandra upstages a revolution. It has been a focal point for protest and for army brutality. Unarmed medical staff were shot dead there near the start of the protest campaign. A monument to those killed remains. The Burmese revolution isn't just one class against another, but just about everybody against Ne Win, the man in charge for 26 years. The old support the upheaval. And the young high school students. Even the lawyers have taken to the streets. These are members of the Bar Council. The staff of Burma Airways are just one group of state employees who've walked out on strike. The students remain the driving force behind the revolt. They issue ID cards to make sure who's on their side. And they produced a host of student newspapers, Burma's first free press in years. But the Buddhist monks have provided a stabilizing force. They've helped keep the country running on a local level at least. Without the monks, basic services such as garbage collection and electricity supply would have collapsed. As the wide support for the protesters grew even more apparent, government agents acted more and more ruthlessly. first aid station set up by the students outside the United States Embassy. Earlier this month, the protests changed character in a way that must have shaken the military top brass. Servicemen joined the marches. These are sailors from the Burmese Navy. The students know what power comes out of the barrel of a gun, hence this blatant appeal for mutiny. It reads, poor soldiers, Using your common sense, answer the following questions. Who do you support most, your country or your commanders? Knowing that your commanders are bloodthirsty ones, the blood of your parents and children, what are you going to do next? As the weeks passed, the smiles disappeared from the protesters, the mood became grimmer. The protesters may not have had guns, increasingly they were not unarmed. This is a new arm struggle. These are called jingli. We shoot them from this kerpop. And here's the jingli wallah. This is how you fire them. You better go away. Yes, not that way. Makeshift courts, under the control of students and monks, carried out summary justice against alleged government infiltrators. This here is an execution at North Okapa, or South Okapa. These people were bought, sent in by uh, fractions of the army to cause unrest in Okapa. They caught them and they beheaded them. Local districts set up their own guard posts, complete with warning gongs to keep out the rising wave of anarchy. As the food started to run out, government stores were looted. The monks and students blamed army agents. The authorities blamed unruly elements. Western diplomats suspected it could have been a bit of both. Even for the lucky ones, things were looking difficult. The diplomatic store not the source of luxuries it once was. But some things remained available at a price. All these items are very hard to...
飞飞你，我这样我中求你。The word anarchy can be used uh, quite reasonably about the situation here, but it's a dictionary anarchy. There's an absence of, of government control. There are large numbers of groups operating independently, running their own small. What has been happening is that since yesterday, trucks and people who look like uh, army personnel have been uh, bursting open warehouses and taking things out of those warehouses. And then they leave the doors open, so of course the people then run in and loot the, the, the place. And I think this is part of a deliberate policy to create confusion and chaos. There is not that much hunger and poverty. Of course, they, things are getting more expensive, but everybody is trying to help in every way they can. And today, some students have been going around distributing rice in the most needy areas. So from the point of view of the people, we are doing all we can to maintain discipline.
Iraqi residences until quite late last night. And there were explosions that we couldn't identify, but which might have been uh, mortars or some similar heavy weapon. Uh, and that lasted until quite late last night. The embassy staff actually heard uh, uh, sustained uh, automatic weapons fire coming from two areas earlier this morning about... When the first demonst large-scale demonstrations began in uh, August last year, uh, hundreds of thousands of people and from millions of people in the street. They were met with an unprecedented brutality. Hundreds, if not thousands, of the demonstrators were gone down in the streets of Rangoon. But still, they did not stop the demonstrations. They just made people angrier. More people go to the streets, and I think the demonstrations reached their height in uh, early September, when there were daily mammoth demonstrations in Rangoon with up to a million people marching against the government. So when the military decided to use violence the second time, when it seized power on the 18th of September. Not a, a, a large number of people were killed, but the number of people killed after the September coup, I believe, is, was not as large as the number in August. But the killings were carried out in a much more systematic way. In August, it was just random shootings. Whenever they spotted a crowd, they opened fire, and people were shot, and then another crowd would appear in another street corner, and they would shoot in that direction. And that, that didn't scare people, really. But... In September, there was icy cold military efficiency. Troops in perfect formation moved into Rangoon, followed by armored car with medium machine guns. And they targeted a certain crowd and moved it down completely. They moved in with cranes and lifted out the barricades, loudspeakers telling people that anybody who was in the street would be shot. There was a, a brutality which was more than the, I think the Burmese public could take. They were crowding the submission. The demonstrators, there were about uh, 20, but 525 looters. <laughs>